Hi there, welcome back for another episode of Writing Club, the new series where we try to answer different questions from the IELTS writing exam uh, so we can get our band 7 or higher. So, in today's lesson, we will look at how to get a band 7 for this question on your screen. So, let's read this together and let's get started. It is becoming increasingly popular to have a year off between finishing the school and going to university. What are the advantages and disadvantages of taking a gap year? Well, just like um, any IELTS writing task 2 essay, um, we need to break this question down into three stages. So, stage 1, we will highlight... Um, important parts of the question and then stage two uh, this is very important we will create our plan so um, and I will guide you on exactly how to do this step by step so we can get our band seven or higher and then stage three is when we write out our essay okay so let's get started with stage one which is highlight the important parts of the question so it is becoming increasingly popular to have a year off between finishing school and going to university. What are the advantages and disadvantages of taking a gap year? Well, straight away, because um, this is an advantages and disadvantages question, we know to highlight these words here. Advantages and disadvantages. Of what? What are we looking at? The advantages and disadvantages of what? Of taking a gap year. So we're also going to highlight that. Uh, let's see if there's anything in the first sentence that we need to highlight. It is becoming increasingly popular to have a year off between finishing school and going to university. Okay. Uh, well, we can highlight this, finishing uh, school and going to university. But I'm going to decide not to highlight these words. And the reason for that is that uh, we've already highlighted taking a gap year. A gap year is just like a synonym uh, for uh, taking a year out of education. So I'm going to leave it as that. And that's stage one already completed. Now let's move on to the plan. So what do we need to do in our plan? Well, uh, in our plan, we need to... Uh, let's do this together, okay? We need to list some advantages and also list some disadvantages now i'm going to explain something very very important here and that is that in a writing task 2 essay okay and the structure of it is four paragraphs introduction body one body two and then the conclusion now body one is one side of the argument so for example the advantages and then body two is the disadvantages okay now, in our conclusion, we need to make it very clear which side of the argument wins. Is it the advantages that wins or is it the disadvantages that wins? Okay, so what that means, and here's the important part. What that means is that we should not have a balanced argument. Okay, L let me explain this so it makes more sense. We should not have uh, two advantages and two disadvantages. Okay? Because in the conclusion, we can't say that the advantages are stronger because we would have the same amount of disadvantages. So what we need to do is have an odd number. For example, we might have two advantages um, and one disadvantage. Okay. And that would automatically show us that um, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, okay? Um, and that's what a good essay should look like. It should come up to a clear conclusion. So, uh, again, to summarize, always have your points, your advantages and disadvantages add up to an odd number, whether that's three, five, seven, nine, so on and so forth. But you don't want too many, okay? So let's... Uh, make a list so let's start with the advantages and um, note down some advantages that we could use in our essay okay um, so 
what are some of the advantages of taking a break from education? Well, I'm going to say a break can uh, give students time to think of which career path they want to go to. So, for example, um, in the UK, where I am based, uh, we finish high school at the age of 16. Okay, Then we go to college for two years. And then after that, we go to university. Well, if we take a break after college, it will give time to students to think about uh, which course they want to go ahead with in university. So I'm going to write that as one advantage that a break can uh, help you think of which career path you want to pursue. So a break can give students time to think which career path they want to pursue. That's it. That's our one advantage done. Okay. Uh, don't worry about this grammatical error because it's just a plan. Um, we're just in the planning stage. Um, another advantage is, uh, and this is from my personal experience actually. So I, I actually uh, took a year um, off after I finished college. And uh, one thing um, that I really liked was that it gave me the uh, luxury to travel. So I'm going to get write that as well. Um, students can travel abroad. Now this is a, a really huge advantage actually. Many people in the UK. Uh, they have the luxury to travel, um, especially when they're young, because uh, as you get older, you might be tied down with things such as your career path, uh, your partner, your wife, your husband, children. So uh, lots of people take advantage of uh, taking time out of um, academic education after college and using that time to travel. So that's our um, second advantage. Um... Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to try to just stick to two advantages here. Okay, that means if you remember that uh, we need to have um, one advantage, uh, sorry, one disadvantage or three disadvantages because in total, the advantages and disadvantages should come up to an odd number. Okay, so let's start with our disadvantages. And by the way, I will make this essay uh, free to download. So I'll leave that in the description below. And if you have any suggestions of questions that you would like me to answer and show you how to get a band seven or higher, just pop them in the comment section below. So um, what are the disadvantages? Well, um, well, I'm going to write um, time away from education can uh, make you lose focus or lose momentum, can make you lose momentum, okay? That's one disadvantage. Uh, another disadvantage is that, um, and this is something I was actually quite scared of when I took a year off, was that um, you might feel left behind when compared to your peers. So students... Uh, might fall behind their peers. Now, imagine you take a year out and um, everyone else who is studying with you does not take a year out and they go ahead and they continue uh, their education. They will finish their degree uh, earlier than you. They will have the ability to gain work experience um, before you. And then by the time you graduate, and uh, the people who you were originally studying with will already be ahead of you. So that's, uh, I would say that's a disadvantage. Now, so far we have two advantages and two disadvantages. So that means we need a third disadvantage. Um, and here I'm going to write a disadvantage is that students can lose focus. Uh when they come back to education after taking a gap year. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, I think that's uh, really good. We've got five good points here. Two advantages and two disadvantages. Uh, so that's our plan done, which means we are ready to write out our essay. So uh, let's begin with our essay. Now, here are some important um, things to know uh, when it comes to writing a band seven or higher uh, essay. Okay, 
So first of all, we need four paragraphs and the introduction and the conclusion should be short and they should be straight to the point. So I will show you how to do this. And um, another thing is in body one and body two, which is the advantages paragraph and the disadvantages paragraph, we want to use um, supporting sentences and sequence words. Now, I will come on to this, so don't worry too much just yet. Uh, let's get started and let's move straight on to our introduction paragraph. So a good introduction should be around 30 to 35 words, okay? Now, that's not accurate, which means that it doesn't have to be 30 or 35 words. But from my experience of writing hundreds of essays and marking thousands of them, I think thousands at this stage, I've been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say a good essay um, is has usually around 30 to 35, maybe even 40 words. And also a good introduction can be written in two sentences. So I will show you how to do that. Sentence one, what do we do? Well, if you look at this um sentence here this is called a statement sentence okay now you will notice that in your question there will generally be two sentences the statement sentence and the instruction the instruction uh, will ask you what to do so it is becoming increasingly popular that's our statement sentence and what we do for sentence one is we just write the statement sentence in our own words that's it Okay, and one of the best ways we can do that is by using synonyms. So a synonym is um, when you have uh, two or more words that mean the same thing. For example, a synonym of small is tiny. Another synonym of small is little. Uh, a synonym of big is huge. Um, and you get the idea. So uh, we're going to write this statement sentence in our word in our own words. Um, and I'm just going to write, there are many advantages and disadvantages of taking a gap year between uh, college and university. Okay. Now, that's all you have to do. The problem with this uh, sentence, however, is that I've used the word advantages and disadvantages, and I've also used gap year. All these words I just written here, okay? So that shows the examiner that I'm either I don't have a wide range of vocabulary or it might show the examiner that I'm just lazy, okay? So what we need to do here is just use a synonym for um, advantages. We need to use a uh, synonym for disadvantages and we can use a synonym for uh, a gap year. We don't have to, okay? I think if we change two of these words, that should be enough. So let's change advantages to uh, a synonym of advantages is positives. Okay. And the opposite of positives is negatives. And that's it, right? That's that's all you have to do. So there are many positives and negatives of taking a gap year between college and university. Now, what you have to do next is answer this question here. So you can actually give your opinion here if you want to. I'm going to show you a different way to do that. I'm just going to write uh, which side of the argument wins, or my opinion, in the conclusion. So what do we do here? Here we just uh, tell the examiner what this whole essay will be about. And you have to be confident here. So let's do this together. This essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of what? Of taking a gap year. Now, again, uh, some of the words here, we need to use synonyms. So let's use uh, a synonym for advantages. Uh, we'll write benefits. And the opposite of benefits is drawbacks. Okay. And again, we've used gap year uh, here. If you, if you can see here. So we don't want to use it again here. So, and let's get rid of this and replace it with a synonym. So a gap year. What is a gap year? Well, 
a gap year is when um, you take time out of education. So we can just write that. Um, taking time out from... We can write education, but I'm going to write studying. Okay. Now let's see how this reads. There are many positives and negatives of taking a gap year between college and university. Perfect. That's fine. This essay will discuss the benefits and drawbacks of take oops, I wrote ah by accident. Sorry, of taking uh, time out or uh, from studying. That's it. That's our introduction uh, complete. Let's see how many words that is. Okay. Well, uh, this is a total of twenty nine words. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Um. Right. Now, now what do we do? Well, now is where we move on to body one. And body one, as we mentioned earlier, is where we introduce one side of the argument. So we'll just talk about the advantages here. Okay. Now, it is very important to not mix and match. So we cannot write one advantage and one disadvantage in body one and then write uh, one or two advantages and another disadvantage in paragraph two. I mean, uh, body two. We need to make each paragraph be about one point only. So body one will be only advantages. Okay. Uh, and then body two will be only disadvantages. So let's uh, do this together. And how can we introduce this paragraph or how can we start this paragraph? Uh, well, we can go straight in. One of the one of the advantages of taking a gap year is that it gives students time to take a break from education and think about which career path they would like to pursue. Okay. There's our in, um, first sentence. However, we can still change this and make this a lot better. Uh, now, notice I've used the word advantage here. And I kept talking about how using this word might be a bad thing because it shows that we don't have a wide range of vocabulary. Well, at this stage, I have used the word positive and I've used the word benefits. So here, uh, now we've shown the examiner that we do have a wide range of vocabulary. So at this stage, if we use the word advantages, that's fine. Uh, but what I'm going to do, just, just to make sure we get those extra marks, I'm going to write one of the many advantages, okay? And I might make a couple of changes here. Um, one of the ad many advantages of taking gap year is that it gives students to... Uh, time to take a break from I'm going to write academic education and think about which career path they want to pursue or would like to pursue okay now we've introduced our first point what we need to do now is um, we can either move on to the second advantage uh, but again, we need that band seven or higher. And one of the easiest ways to do this is once you have given an advantage is write a supporting sentence. So what is a supporting sentence? Well, a supporting sentence is a sentence that gives extra information to the advantage. OK, uh, so I'll show you how we can do this. Um, there's two easy ways to do this, actually. One is uh, give an example. And another one is um, talk about some statistics that back up this idea. For example, you might say um, uh, statistics show that people who take a gap year um, perform very highly in, uh, in their degree. Okay, so we'll just mention something like this. So we'll write statistic, actually, recent statistics I hate this word statistics it's so hard to say recent statistics recent statistics have shown that students who take a gap year 
um, to explore different career paths that often perform better when they return to uh, education. Okay, that that's kind of enough, but I think we can develop this further. Um, return to education and attend university. Some nice words there. Um, now, there is one problem. I wrote perform better. So that's uh, uh, comparing, okay? I am better than you, okay? At what? Okay, the iPhone is better than uh, the Samsung's. Oh, sorry, the iPhone is better than the Samsung. At what? So we need a bit more detail, okay? So what are we comparing it to? So compared to those students who do not take a break from education. Okay, bit of a longer sentence here. That's fine. Okay, uh, we might even get extra marks for that because it shows that we can uh, include a variety of sentence types. Okay, and different lengths. So um, that's our one advantage done. And now we've also added our, um, our statistics to support our uh, advantage. And that's perfect. All we now need to do is move on to the second advantage. So how do we move on to the second advantage? Okay, do we just change the subject completely? Well, there's something I mentioned at the start of this video, which is very important. Uh, and that is uh, something called sequence words. Okay, now what is a sequence word? Well, a sequence word, first of all, is actually a, a really easy way um, to get higher marks. But what is it though? So a sequence word is a word that puts things in order. So for example, firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, those are sequence words, okay? It puts things in order. Firstly, um, this is an advantage. Secondly, this is an advantage, okay? Now you don't need to use these all the time, but because we're moving on um, from uh, one advantage to another, and because I want to show you how to do this, I'm going to uh, use a, a sequence word here. Um, now, we can use the word secondly, right? Now, I know I gave the example of firstly, secondly, thirdly uh, being examples of sequence words. And that was just for the sake of um, you understanding it. The problem with these sequence words, firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, fifthly, sixthly, and so on and so forth, is that they get very boring and very predictable. So I'm just going to change this to another um, sequence word um, and or a sequence term, and that is a second benefit. So that's, this is a nice word. Now, a second benefit of what? We have to be very clear in our writing. A second benefit of taking gap year is, and now we can just introduce our second point, which in this case is students can travel abroad. So a second benefit of taking a gap year is that it gives uh, students the luxury or the opp opportunity. It gives students the opportunity to travel abroad, okay, and experience new cultures. Ah, this is making me miss the gap year that I took. <laughs> I uh, traveled to the Philippines um, and uh, also to Thailand um, yeah, during my studies and I had an amazing time. Uh, but anyway, so let's get back to the essay. So we've introduced our second uh, advantage. Now what we need to do is the same thing. Okay, We need to add a supporting sentence so we can add a statistic or we can give an example. Now, just because I've already given a statistic, I'm going to not do that one. I want to show you how to um, give an example now. Now, there's three ways to do this. There's, there's two easy ways. I'm just going to talk about a third one here, though. So we mentioned two. One is to talk about uh, some type of statistic. We won't do that, though, because we've already done it. Another one is give an example. Or the third option is to add on uh, additional information. So we can either give an example now or add on extra information. Uh, so let's read the sentence and then uh, we will decide what to do. So a second benefit of taking a gap year is that it gives students the opportunity 
to travel abroad and experience new cultures. Now, I'm just going to use, um, I'm just going to add on extra information. And that's only because it's something I mentioned before. I said earlier um, that as people get older, um, uh, it becomes much more harder to travel. So uh, being young uh, and studying is, is a good time to travel. So many people, I'm just going to say that many people find it difficult to travel um, when they get older. So many people find it difficult to travel as they get older. Okay, that's not enough information though. So let's continue. So using the time between education to travel can be beneficial. Okay. Um, there you go. I, I'm really happy with that, actually. Uh, a second benefit of taking a gap year. Okay, we've done that one. Many people find it difficult to travel as they get older. So, using the time between education to travel can be beneficial. I'm just going to change this word using to utilizing. Okay, and the reason for that is that is because it's very important to use a wide range of of vocabulary. Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but if you don't know what this is, a wide range of vocabulary is just a nice way to say, use um, quite a lot of words, okay? And also, you, you want to use them in a natural way. So, you don't want to use words that you never, ever hear of. Um, you want to use them naturally. So, this is a good way to use it. Um, so, now that we've done this, I think... Uh, I think that paragraph is complete. We mentioned both advantages. We've added on extra information to both of those advantages. Uh, that's a perfect paragraph, actually. I'm really pleased with that. Now we can move on straight to the um, third paragraph, which is body two, uh, which is where we will talk about the disadvantages. Okay, now... Now that we've uh, done the advantages, we just need to follow the same format, okay? Which is introduce a disadvantage, back it up with some information, introduce the second disadvantage, give more information, and we just keep doing this, okay? Uh, so again, I will show you how to do this. Now, here is... Oh, now, here is uh, how we can introduce this um paragraph by using the word however and the comma okay so if you ever start a paragraph with the word however uh, i think most of the times if not all the times we would have to use the word however um then what do you do then you just say there are also many disadvantages okay that shows the reader that this paragraph will talk about the disadvantages so however there are also many and drawbacks. I like that word. Drawbacks of taking a gap year. Okay. Now, at this stage, if you want to, you can use synonyms uh, for drawbacks or gap year because I think we've used both of them a couple of times. Um, but we don't have to. And the reason why we don't have to is because we've used a wide range of vocabulary anyway throughout the essay. So at this stage, it's not necessary unless... We keep repeating the same words over and over and over and over again. Okay. Uh, but in, anyways, this is our uh, introduction to the third paragraph. And that sentence is perfect. However, there are many drawbacks of taking a gap year. Um, now I'm going to introduce the first disadvantage. What was the first one? The first disadvantage was ta uh, time away from education can make you lose momentum. Okay. Um, I'm going to write students that take time out of education can ruin the momentum in a student's life. I will change this uh, sentence, I think. And what will that result to? So we will say leading them to struggle with the exams when they return back to or come back to return to education so let's read this let's see if there's anything we can uh, change okay uh 
Students that take time out of education can ruin the momentum in a student's life. Okay, so we definitely need to change this word here. Okay, because it kind of doesn't make sense. I'm going to add a little bit of a twist here. I'm going to I'm going to take away students completely, okay? And I'm going to say many parents believe that um taking we just need to fix the grammar there. Many people believe sorry, many parents believe that taking time out of education can ruin the momentum in a student's life leading them to struggle with their exams when they return to education. Wow, I really like that sentence. Um, but again, we must uh, use extra information here. Now, uh, I did mention that uh, we should add extra information. Uh, we do not need to add extra information for every single point. Why? Well, one of the reasons is that it becomes too predictable. So we won't add one here. And, and and also this sentence is quite long anyway. So there's quite a lot of detail in there. So we don't need to. We, we will probably add on um, extra information or use a supporting sentence for the second and third disadvantage. But let's see. So let, now this um, disadvantage is complete. We need to introduce the second disadvantage, which was that Student might fall behind uh, when compared to their peers. So, um, so we can use the uh, sequence word secondly. Uh, again, I don't like these because they're too predictable. The ones I like are these. And, and I will make a video on this, on how to use sequence words. Um, because they're so easy to use and so uh, beneficial. So, here's some. In addition... Uh, furthermore, uh, additionally, moreover, okay, these are some of the best ones to use. So I will use furthermore. All these words, by the way, they're just synonyms for the word and. This is an advantage and this is an advantage and this is an advantage. Instead of using and, we just use these words here. This is an advantage. In addition, this is also an advantage. Furthermore, this is an advantage. You get the idea. So I'm going to use furthermore. Furthermore. And then the comma. Uh, don't forget the comma after using a sequence word. Okay. Furthermore. Another advantage of taking a gap year. What was our plan? Oh yeah. Students for. Oops. Disadvantage. Sorry. Another disadvantage. Of taking a gap year. Is that. Students often become concerned or worried, okay, about falling behind their peers. And that's it. Um, so, so far, we're doing quite well. Um, what's our... We can add a supporting sentence here. Let's just see um, the third disadvantage before we do anything. Uh, just so I can make the whole paragraph flow. So students can lose focus when they come back to education after taking a gap year. Uh, okay, I think this disadvantage here is a good one to add a supporting sentence. Why? Because um, this sentence doesn't make sense on its own. Students can lose focus. Well, so what if they lose focus? Okay, they can just work harder, right, to make up. Well, I'm going to say uh, if students lose focus they might lose motivation um, and then they're really going to struggle. So I will add a supporting sentence for this one. I'll, I will add it for the final one. Okay. So again, let's uh, introduce our third point with another sequence word. M moreover, <clears throat> um, time... Oh, I'm going to write uh, that time away from education can lead to a lack of motivation, which can lead to poor exam results. That's actually a nice sentence. Okay. Moreover, time away from education can lead to a lack of motivation resulting in poor exam results. Okay. Um, let's just see the word count here. Two, two, two. 
Right, okay, 76. Like, let's compare this here. 117. Okay, so we're on about 200 there. Um, and then this was, I think, 30. So I think right here at this stage, we can add a supporting sentence if we need to. We do not have to, okay? Um, and I say that based on the word count, by the way. So moreover, time away from education can lead to a motivation resulting in poor exam results. Do I need to add on a supporting sentence here? The answer is no. Why not? Um, because every, this is a complete sentence. It's whole. And what I mean by that is that all the information that you would need is already included in that. It's uh, time away from education. Okay. It leads to more lack of motivation. Okay. Uh, which again leads to poor exam results. So we don't need to. Can if you want to, just for uh, the sake of time, I will move on and show you how to write the conclusion paragraph. So a good conclusion uh, only needs to be one sentence long. That's it. Okay. Also, there should be no new points in the conclusion paragraph. Okay. Um, the conclusion is just to summarize the essay, just finish it off with one precise, concise um, sentence. That just means, by the way, straight to the point, clear, make it clear. And how can we start the conclusion paragraph? Well, we can start um, the conclusion paragraph in one of two ways. Um, we can write in conclusion, comma, or we can write to conclude, comma. We'll just stick with this one. So, how do we continue this? Well, we just need to write down, although um, there are many advantages, the disadvantages outweigh the positives, okay? Or the other way around, okay? So, let's do this together. Uh, to conclude, although there are many uh, disadvantages, so I'm saying here, yeah, there are some really bad things, but the good things uh, are stronger, okay? So, although there are many disadvantages of taking a gap year, now, we've used gap year, but I'm going to replace that because I've used it too many times. Uh, taking a break from education, I think I've used this as well, but at this stage, that's still better than gap year. Uh, the downside, could write disadvantages, but we've used that. So the downside of uh, leaving education, although we're not just leaving, are we? We're, com we're coming back. So temporarily leaving education for a short-term benefit clearly outweighs the positives of taking a gap year. Now, at this stage, I've used gap year just because it's the final few words. So it brings it back to the question itself. Okay, that's why. Um, and also, if you look here, I've used the word clearly. Why have I used this? Well, I've used this word because it just shows how confident I am. I'm confident in my writing. So here is our complete essay. Again, I will make this free to download. You can find the link in the description below. Um, and let's see how many words this is. And uh, this is a total of 254 words. That's perfect. So, um, just a quick point here. How many words should you write? Well, the minimum is 250, okay? We already know this. Okay, what's the maximum? Is it 260? Is it 300? Is it 3,000? Do you get more marks for more words? Well, no, not necessarily. I usually tell my students to write uh, anywhere between the minimum amount, which is 250, uh, and to a 10% buffer. So 10% of 250 is 25. So anywhere between 250 plus 25 words which is 275, anywhere between there. So anywhere between 250 words and 275 words, that's fine. If you go slightly over, like 280, 285, 
that's not the end of the world. You can still get a band nine, okay? Uh, but do not try to um, go, uh, do not try to write less than 250 words because you will lose marks, okay? Uh, now, that's our essay done. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.